Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Today we are kayak fishing. I, uh, I got some new kayaks that I wanna share with you guys. I got two new kayaks. Sam thinks one is hers and one is mine. I think they're both mine, but that's, that's a whole nother discussion. But we got two Old Town Sportsmen and uh, one is pedal drive and one is power drive. Power drive being powered by Minn Kota Motor, pedal drive being exactly that, it's pedals. It's, it's like a bicycle type system, which it's, it's insane. I used it for the first time. Uh, I've done I've done a little bit of fishing out of this uh, out of it. This will be my first real session, and I want to bring you guys along for you know first impressions and uh, you know see how fishable it is. Obviously, with the trolling motor, there's uh, a lot of functionality you don't get when you're using the pedal drive. But I've heard really good things about this. So I'm not going to talk too much. We're doing some back lake adventuring, and that's why I thought the 10 footer would be better because we got to drag this baby down a trail, and um, it's 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 going to be a little bit of work, but sometimes. It pays off. So anyways, going to a lake I've never been to before. I got a hot tip from Sam's dad that he caught bass in this lake like 45 years ago. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna give it a shot. It might be a complete flop. It might be the best smallie fishing I've ever seen. So yeah, we're gonna talk about kayak fishing. I'll give you some first impressions. Here we go. All right, here's what we're packing. We got the actual pedal drive module. This is a super, super cool deal. I'll, I'll show that a little more in depth at shore. Um, we got three combos. We got my old hard case that I've had forever. All my camera gear in there. Uh, one tackle tray, this is my day trip box. And what I do there is I have, you know, obviously a bunch of different um, Plano trays that I use. I just have one big deep one that I combine. So on, on kayak trips, it's just, you don't want to take so many trays. I like to, you know, obviously take as little gear as possible. And that, that's the point about this 10 footer is there was times last year with my, with my big kayak with a 12 footer plus a trolling motor plus a battery. It just got so excessive. So, um, the, I, I want to, you know, streamline things as far as powering things. I got uh, my trusty power box to power a couple um, GoPros. And once we're on the water, we're pretty much just using GoPros to film um, with an audio recorder to give us some good clean audio. But that's pretty much it. Got the paddle on the side. Yeah, we'll, we'll hike to the lake and then I'll kind of show you how this how this baby sets up. And it's just, uh, I, yeah, today's going to be good. A good day. I can feel it. All right guys, here we go. All right, so looking at the deal here, um, it comes pretty much ready to fish. You know, I'll, I'll go over a couple of the features. This is, you need this rudder on the back because this is what steers. So right there, this thing will drop down and that's what steers. And it's amazing how well it steers. On the side, you got your paddle holder. And this comes with three rod holders already. And that's something that I've had to add on my past kayak. This is the steering control. I'll show that later. I already lost the top piece for it, but it's supposed to be a nice top cap on there. We'll talk about the seat. We've got storage underneath here, dry storage right there. And then we've got the pedal drive system. So check this out guys, this is so cool. It doesn't spin freely here, but as you can see, it's ridiculous. It makes so much sense. It looks just like a trolling motor. You'd swear that was a Minn Kota on the bottom there. Um, on the top here, You've got dry storage. I've got my phone and my wallet in there. Super ideal. Then going farther forward, you can see this is what locks this mechanism in. You can also pull it out and just use it as a normal kayak deal. Some storage on the side. These are sliders that you can use for all sorts of accessories. You get to the front, another dry storage compartment. You can fit lots of stuff in there. I mounted a GoPro ball at the front here to mount my Osmo. That's pretty much it. So I think we're going for smallies. I think that's what's in this lake. So we got the three options here. We got a hair jig a blade bait if the fish are a little deeper. And then we got a swim bait, which is gonna be good for search and covering water. I think once we find fish with the swim bait, we'll probably slow down and use the hair jig. If I were to guess, guessing on a smaller lake like this, it's not that deep and the fish are gonna come shallow, but lots of storage. I noticed like so much storage in the back. I mean, you could have full camping gear in here. I just like that it's ready to fish. Cup holder on the side. All right, now that we're deeper here, and um, we are gonna put in the pedal drive. It unhooks in the back here. You slide it down. And all you gotta do is just turn this little knob here to the lock position. And there we go. If you're in super shallow water, you'll probably wanna wait to get that pedal drive going, but push this out. Oh, and there we go, we're already too shallow here. Give us a couple pushes with the paddle and we'll be good. Who would've thought you have to paddle in a kayak? Wow, look at this lake. Drop the sucker back in. All right, 
before we start kicking, this is one other little treat I got, and this is the sonar ball. I, I honestly didn't think I'd use this at all when I got it, but um, I used it ice fishing a couple times as a backup. You may have seen it in a video or two or me talk about it in my electronics video for ice fishing, but this is a pretty cool mount for a kayak. And I have had side imaging, the full deal, all that stuff. But for something quick, this is amazing because I can just drop this in, it'll auto level. It's got the mount here that goes in the bracket. It just sits beside me. Yeah, it goes up and down based on, like look at that, it just floats. And then I'll use my phone to get depth, to get water temp. Oh, first thing I gotta do is I gotta drop my, I gotta use this sucker. And then this drops the, karate chops the water. Here we go. <laughs> so good, wow, this water's clear. Let's stand up. Oh wow, nice weeds. This lake is small. Like, you guys can see the whole thing. That is the lake. It says it's 58 degrees. That means the bass should be like shallow. All right, we're starting with the jerk bait. I am starting with the headbanger shad. This will just be a good search bait to cast around. If we see some fish, then we will slow down with some, some hair jigs or plastics. But the steering's, it's crazy how responsive it is. Like you just, I'm doing just small movements with my hand. And it, uh, wow, this, this lake is just crystal clear. Water's still 56 degrees. These fish are gonna be like munching hair jigs, swim baits. They're gonna be, they're gonna be on shoreline, I think. I don't think they're gonna be deep. All right, the bait, the lake has plateaued at 25 feet deep. So I think with kayak fishing, especially if you don't have, you know, a motor spot locking you, I think you want to, you know, fish with a wind to your advantage. So right now, there's a slight, slight breeze behind me and it's just giving us a nice drift along the shoreline. Wow, the weeds in this lake are just insane. I wish I would've brought the drone. I see a pike. I see a pike. Let's see if we can get a cast on him. Wow, this is insane. Oh, I'm gonna catch this pike. Oh, he likes it. Look at him, look at him, Chase. Look at this, guys. Oh, we're gonna catch him again. On the headbanger shad, he just fired up. Okay, well there's fish in this lake, it is confirmed. And another thing to note, this is stable. Definitely stable. I like playing keep away with those pike. I should probably check my line after that situation. We're gonna fish this whole lake in an hour. I do like the fact that this is a workout. Another good trick when you're kayak fishing is casting parallel to the shoreline. You can just cover so much fishy water if you're drifting fast and don't have a chance to pick it apart. Ooh, that might've been a smallie. I'm getting, what do we got? Nope, uh, another pike. We're about to drift into shore here. You can reverse on this, check this out. How good is that? Nice little jackfish. Chopped the tail of my swim bait. There you go. <laughs> He's gone. All right. I don't know if I have more swim baits. I don't know what I brought even. All right, we're going to the hair jig. We've got bites on everything so far. All right, this hair jig right here, I actually uh, tied it up with some of my turkey feathers from the turkey that I shot not too long ago. Marabou, should I say. And it looks real fishy. Okay, this is the fishiest looking spot so far. Nice little gravel bar sticking out here. I'm just gonna slow roll this hair jig over top and I'm gonna reverse this in a second. But this looks good. Oh, there's a fish behind me. Got him. What is it? If that's a bass, it's huge. If that is a bass, it's huge. There's, is that a bass? That is a huge bass if it's a bass. On Jay's turkey jig. Oh, that's a big smallie. Oh, baby. Thank you, Dave Walleen. Don't give you enough credit as a fisherman. But he led me onto this gem and first cast with the hair jig. Oh, that's a hog. Dave said four, five pounders he caught out here back in the day. As soon as we got into a rocky shoreline, sure enough. Oh, that's big. Oh, that's big. It is tough landing fish in kayaks, I will tell you that. And I'm just not good at it. Oh, guys, I gotta turn the kayak for this. Oh baby, first bass in the old town. And it is 
a hog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is so big. <laughs> Look at that small mouth. Eight, the hair jig. I just saw some light behind it. And I was like, there's a fish. That's probably a three and a half pounder. I don't know, it's 19 inches, maybe bigger. Wow, 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 wow. All right, guys. First bass in the new kayak. <laughs> Let's go on the turkey jig. So this jig is 332nd ounce. This is a bullet nose head. This is when I melted myself actually. And I took some turkey feathers, tied them on at the vise. And uh, wow, 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 wow. All right, we're on the board. It is nice to stand when you can. And you can see, especially in the super clear lakes if there's fish behind you. So essentially a marabou jig is just, yeah, imitating a, a leech cruising through the water. And smallies like leeches. Another big one. Okay, not as big. Nice fish though. Wow, that fish was shallow. He's pulling the kayak. Guys, there are just, there are so many smallmouth lakes around Kenora. Like really any of the small lakes it feels like have smallmouth in them. Just so many of them don't get fished. Oh, he just spit up a perch. That's what they're eating. That was good right against shore where the breeze was blowing. That warmer water and warm water is just so key in the springtime. Lighting isn't great for that, but. You guys get the picture. Oh, there's a fish behind me. Oh. <laughs> that was, he just charged it so fast. Unreal. This is a nice one. So, so sweet in this clear water. And it's almost as big as the first one. No. Oh man, we are getting spoiled today. Another big bronze beauty on the hair jig. You know, and that's why I love fishing these back lakes. I can fish a new lake every day and just not even put a dent into the lakes around here. I'm just slow rolling it. My favorite hair jig rod is a seven and a half foot medium light. Good whippy tip for bombing these light jigs. Um, this is 10 pound braid with an eight pound floral leader. Probably even lighter braid. I know some people use six pound braid for hair jigs, that'd be good too. As I've mentioned before, 10 pound is just kind of my general use for everything you can kind of get away with it for smallmouth and a lot of walleye applications. But yeah, another thing that's key is just keeping your spool as full as possible because it just will cast that much easier. It'll pick up line faster. And that's something you want for a hair jig. A bigger arbor reel is gonna help you cast further too, because there's just less friction when that line's coming off the reel. Great, I can actually see one in the shallows here, guys. Let's see if I can get his attention. Got him. Ooh, that's a nice one. Let's try to paddle out of here. Oh, <laughs> so good, this clear water. Oh, this has been fun. Look at that. <laughs> so good. Ooh, what was that? See something on the weed edge. Looks like a smallie. I'm dropping it right beside him. Got him. What is that? Oh, that might be a big smallie. No, not big. Wow. So cool. You can see him probably 10 feet down. Okay, well some of the fish are using the weeds apparently. Okay, that's bigger than I thought. <laughs> Another chunky mama. Oh. Give you guys one more look. Right there. Very cool, and like standing and fishing you just, you see stuff. I mean, I know that's common sense, but sitting and fishing, you just sometimes miss what's going on. I know you can maybe get away with it for like walleye fishing, but when you're fishing clear water, bass fishing, pike fishing, musky fishing, standing, you just, you learn stuff. You see stuff, you see the weed bed. I saw that fish cruising along the side of the weed bed and 
but yeah, I mean, you just, you work with what you got. And I think that's, that's the important thing. And one of the topics I wanted to, question I wanted to answer in this video is like, is a fishing kayak worth it? And yes, like whatever you have access to, if you have like just an old beater canoe or a fancy new pedal drive or a power driver or a boat or, or whatever it might be, I mean, you can do so much. I did so many fishing trips back in the day with a 12 foot aluminum and a 55 pound <laughs> min coat on the back. So you just, you deal with what you get. And the thing is like, yeah, you might not have the stability and you know, you might not be able to go in the big waves as with a kayak as you would with a boat, but then you get to these lakes that you can't even put a boat into. So there's definitely, you know, pros and cons to it all. I, I enjoyed kayak fishing way more than I ever could have expected. And I wouldn't be fishing this lake otherwise. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd be hauling a 12 or 14 foot boat back here. Yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. The hair jig has been, hair jig has definitely been the winner. All right, guys, that is it for fishing today. Uh, huge success. I mean, we caught some nice big smallmouth, but that wasn't the main goal. The main goal is to, to give the, the old town kayak its first workout. And I, I think we did that. It, uh, it did what we needed it to. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm going to give some final thoughts yet on shore. We're going to pedal back for now, but uh, that was, that was sweet. Definitely, definitely coming back here. Thank you, Sam's dad. All right, guys, we're back for my kayak adventure. Since then, I've gone on a, a couple trips with the pedal drive. I've yet to fish out of um, the power drive, which I'm gonna do uh, a review type impressions video of it. But yeah, I've had a chance to fish out of it a couple times. The 106 pedal in the Sportsman series. I love, I love my big boat, don't get me wrong, but it is amazing how much you can do with, with a kayak. Like it just opens the doors to lakes that you would never be able to get to, as I mentioned many times. And for me, I love that. I can just throw in the back of my truck. Don't need to worry about a trailer, especially with that 10 foot size. I keep my, my tailgate open. I think I have like a five and a half foot box. Keep the tailgate open, a couple of ratchet straps and it's good to go. So there's definitely a lot to be said for that. Um, I know, you know, you can put on the roof of an SUV. So instantly you don't necessarily need a, a, a truck, which obviously you need for some bigger boats. I mean, yes, is a fishing kayak worth it? Absolutely. Like even for me, someone who has, a beautiful Lumacraft sitting over there. There's still so many situations where I want to use the fishing kayak and it's just, it's it's something different. And I can see why it's growing so fast. Kayak fishing is just exploding and it's it's pretty tough to find a fishing kayak right now because they're, they're selling out everywhere. A couple things that I was really impressed with, the stability on a 10 and a half foot, I thought it was gonna be a lot shakier. Being able to stand and fish out of it is no problem. I'm gonna try to do a tip test at some point, but you're probably more likely to actually fall out than, than to tip the whole unit. Um, it had lots of storage in the back, more storage than I think I'll probably need. Being able to turn with that little knob made it so easy. The, the only thing that is tougher is, you know, when you want to stop and anchor and fish somewhere, obviously a motorized version would be better, or you could put some sort of anchor or power pole on the back. Um, they make like a micro one now. Um, but yeah, for ease of use, the reason why I wanted the 10 footer as well is just for, for lakes where I needed to drag it in. The 12 footer is great with the motor and everything. Um, but the thing about that is you're just taking so much gear in and you know, if I'm doing bigger water, I think that the power drive is probably gonna be the option if I know that I'm gonna have to go across a lake. But if I'm not going crazy far fishing the smaller lakes, I think I'm probably gonna choose the, choose the pedal drive most of the time. But anyways, um, I haven't really put it through the paces yet, just a couple days on the water, but I am loving it. I uh, hope you guys are looking forward to some more kayak videos. If you're looking for a kayak, I highly recommend checking out Old Town. I'll link them below. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions on accessories or things I need to add to my kayak, please let me know as well, because I am a newbie in the kayak fishing world. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to wear a life jacket and we will catch you on the water very, very soon.